is the insert for the dipstick. Okay, this piece actually grides on the inside of the pan. It's on the passenger side just behind the motor mount and your dipstick tube comes down through the manifold and plugs in here. There's an O-ring that rides in this groove from the inside. Okay. What happens is the O-ring will swell over time from the heat and the chemicals and whatnot. It'll swell and it will start to seat down the side. The crankshaft is on the inside constantly flinging oil on this thing and when the O-ring fails then it just pours down the side of the, the side of the engine there. I gotta warn you about replacing this. There's a little thin, you'll, you'll look at the outside and it'll have a little very thin like a nut that attaches to this. A lot of people will go on and try to tighten it just to try to see if they can get it to quit leaking and that's a mistake. All that's going to do is make this, this swollen up o-ring just squish out and it's going to leak even worse. If you continue to tighten it you will deform that ring and you'll never get the thing to work right. My recommendation is is to have it fixed correctly by a professional and I'll tell you why. Somebody who's done this before. The starter rides right in here. You got to take the starter out for one. This piece is on the inside. The only way you can get a hold of it is with a pair of needle nose vice grips and hold on to this thing. Get the dipstick out of the way, the starter out of the, state, out of the way and remove this. Now, if you let go of this thing, you're in a world of shit and I'll tell you why. If this piece falls down inside the pan, it's made out of aluminum, so you can't get a hold of it with a magnet. Okay, it's dark and oily inside there. You'll never get the thing back. I've actually seen some trucks come in that were repaired somewhere else where they took a welder and cut a, you know, a torch and cut a hole inside the pan and re-welded it. Because you can't remove the oil pan off of the truck with a motor in the truck. It's impossible. In vans, it's even worse, but there's no way to get this oil pan because the cross member rides right here. It's absolutely impossible. You would drive yourself crazy. If you lose this piece down inside there, you're going to have to pull the motor out of the truck. You do not, under any circumstances, want to do that. Now, if you have a hold of it this way, you can remove, this, remove the ring and you can replace the O-ring and then put the ring back on. And it's a relatively painless thing. But unless you are a mechanic who does this for a living every single day, I do not recommend this repair to a novice. Because if you drop that piece down in there, you're in a world of hurt. There's no way to get it back. I've sat there and tried. I've made the mistake. I've done the screw up. I had to. I had to pull the motor out. You know, uh, everything that I tell you in this video uh, has been learned the hard way. If I tell you it's going to be difficult, it's because I screwed up and did something stupid and I learned the hard way and I want you to learn from my mistake so if you have a leak from this area don't touch it if it's not a bad leak live with it if you can't when you get to a point where you can't live with it take it to the dealer or take it to an expert mechanic who has done this repair before one of the other places that uh, power strokes like to leak from is this back corner right here I don't know what they were thinking but they, use, they don't use an actual gasket here, it's just a lot of glue, okay? And there's not a lot of bolts. I mean, there's, there isn't even a corner bolt. Like, you know, you can do a small block Chevrolet or most gasoline motors, there's a bolt right here that's a corner bolt. Your first bolt is here, your second bolt is here, and your third bolt is here. Personally, if I was designing a motor, I'd have put, a, I'd have put one here, okay? But that's, what, that's another thing for another day. But lots of times, if you have oil dripping around your starter area, it's because these bolts need to be tightened up. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've been underneath the truck and the man comes in here and he says, oh, I think I need a rear main seal and I got this and I got that and you know, he, he's expecting to pay you know, a couple three thousand dollars to have all this fixed and I go in there and I tighten these bolts up and charge the man fifty dollars, which I think is a pretty good deal for him and damn good deal for me for tightening three bolts. While we're standing at this spot, I, I need to talk about the power steering pump. If there's any weak link in your power steering system, it's this damn pump. It's the exact same pump that they run on a Mustang or a Taurus or any of these other things. It's the same pump. And this pump, as you can see here, there's two inlets coming back. This pump not only runs your power steering unit, but it also runs Hydro Boost. So if this unit fails, then you have no brakes and no steering. Okay? It's extremely important to keep an eye on this thing. The biggest gripe I have about the design is, as you notice, see the reservoir is slid onto the back here. And now this particular one's been replaced recently, but this plastic piece will, will become loose on this metal piece. And as you see, 
the, the, there's the, the plastic in this meets below the fluid line. The fluid should be right, you know, right up in here. Well, there's just an O-ring, a big O-ring that goes around the outside of this thing to hold the fluid in. And over time, it will start to jiggle. Of course, there's lots of vibration in a, in a diesel engine and whatnot. And, it will, and the heat will make the O-ring hard. And then as fast as you pour the fluid in this end, it's going to pour out this end. There are some aftermarket units and aftermarket setups that use the use a General Motors style um, uh, Saginaw pump, which is far superior. You, believe me, you put a Saginaw pump on here, it'll outlive the rest of the truck. And on certain rescue vehicles, I've done that. But this is the stock system, and this is something to keep an eye on uh, to make sure that the leaking here and, and make sure that it stays maintained. Because if you lose fluid pressure in this system, your brakes and your steering are going to become extremely difficult. Here's the power steering sector as it's removed from the, the truck. Here's your vacuum pump and the pulley runs right through here and up to the AC compressor. Your AC compressor would be mounted here. But more importantly, we're talking about the power steering sector. This power steering unit, your, your hose comes here and this fitting is where the hose is attached. I have it loose for, for illustration purposes. But notice how it's just a plastic reservoir and the plastic reservoir is held onto the actual pump and the only thing that's holding the fluid in is a single o-ring right here and this o-ring after ten years of being in the truck or eight years of being in the truck will harden up and it will and it will crack and there's all sorts of vibration so you know from diesels and whatnot vibrate terribly and this thing's shaking around on here and it will start to leak from right under here if you're going to use this truck to make money or if you're going to use this truck to haul you and your kids and your camper all over the countryside it is best to have a unit like this fixed and working properly in your vehicle.